Hi there, it's Alina Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer. Happy New Year. It's New Year's Day as I do this. Um, okay, so let's talk about events of January 2015 from an esoteric perspective, astrology events. Not a super stressful month, really. We're just going to deal with some Mercury retrograde talk and some other things. Okay, so let's take first things first is that, of course, the sun's in Capricorn, right? It's January, um, at least this part of January. And the sun is going to conjunct Pluto, and that'll be on the 4th, so just this weekend. There just can be an intensity with that. I mean, it's kind of good for the new year. That can be good for New Year's resolutions. And I was just talking to someone today about her not wanting to drag um, you know, things from 2014 into 2015. So it's a great time to be doing, you know, continuing to do release work and, um, you know, knowing what you want to manifest in the new year and what you don't want to manifest, what parts you need to be released, you know. Um, and it can be just, just in general, sometimes sun conjunct Pluto is people are just feeling kind of intense, but it's not a big deal. So, um, it's a good time for reflection and doing, you know, again, that kind of release work and stuff. And it's a little bit of an inward kind of thing. So people aren't as like, yeah, it's the weekend, we're doing stuff. And it can be too, because it's after the holidays and kind of that, ah, you know, the weekend after the holidays, you don't have to do anything. So that can be a great time to do some more spiritual work for you. <clears throat> okay. So now we want to talk about, let's see, what do I want to do? Well, also I'll leave Mercury retrograde for last. Okay. The other thing that's going to be happening is Mars is going into Pisces. That's going to happen on the 11th of January. It stays in Pisces until um, the 19th of February, which is actually pretty quick. Usually Mars takes about two months to go through a sign. Okay, so I get Mars in Pisces, so I can say these things, I guess, about Mars in Pisces. You know, Mars is about getting things done. You know, Pisces is more... Um, uh, you know, doing things on the inner planes. So in a lot of ways, Mars, the action planet in Pisces, is good for, again, this inner work. It's, it also can be very fearful. And um, because Mars is courage, you know, and Pisces is sort of, you know, like, like uh, I'm like not the type that wants to bungee jump or even go on an airplane or go on an amusement ride. Or, oh. um, I'm not fearful. Um, you know, dealing with people on an intimate level, the Pisces, you know, and, and the spiritual adventure, but, you know, physical kind of things where I feel like I'm in danger, well, no. And so Pisces, <laughs> Mars and Pisces in general is, you know, kind of a quieter time, but it can be um, people's inner fears can come up who are more into the outer type of courage, you know, people that can jump out of an airplane, but they're afraid to you know, connect intimately, that kind of stuff can come up when Mars is in Pisces. People afraid of commitment or about their depth or people's spiritual fears who don't like to look inward. So as a spiritual person, you might find people maybe confiding in you or talking to you about those kinds of things. Um, right away when Mars moves into Pisces, it will first of all square Saturn and then conjunct Neptune. So when Neptune square, I mean, when Mars squares Saturn, it'll be the 14th of January, and then it will conjunct Neptune on the 19th of January. And this is where also you get when people are a little more defensive. Again, they're, they're feeling more vulnerable. Mars moved into Pisces. They're not used to this if they have different, you know, Mars and other, you know, rah, kind of stronger signs. So um, people can feel they're up against themselves internally and then can, can feel a little frustrated with you, it's like their frustration with themselves can come out on you, and that can be with bosses or, or people who are afraid of things they aren't expressing, financial issues, things like that. So just watch out for that around the 11th. And then when Mars conjuncts Neptune on the 19th, um, it sort of is the height of it. You know, I mean, on one level, Mars conjuncting Neptune can be um, visualizing what you want to manifest. Again, if you're on a spiritual path, I mean, it's fabulous for that. You know, what are your goals for the new year? You've made these resolutions. You have, but how is it really going to come about? And how are you um, imagining yourself, how you are going to feel in these possibilities to make them even more real, to make yourself be that person who's having that experience even before it happens, you know? You're practicing those feelings. So that's wonderful with Mars conjunct Neptune. The negative part can be a lot of doubt. Um, 
you know, in, watching out for um, entertaining your fears, you know, and saying, because Pisces, with the Mars and Pisces here, and Neptune being Pisces planet, it's fear or it's faith. And it can be very extreme at the time when um, Mars is doing that with its own planet. So it's like, you know, which way are we going with this? Are we filled with doubt? And, um, you know, if there's legitimate doubt, how do I get stronger in a certain area to make my dreams manifest or something like that? But saying, let me meditate and not operate from fear, but insight. Hmm. In order to get that, I need to do a little more of this or a little less of that. Instead of like, oh my God, nothing's ever going to work for me. Ah. That's like the negative part of Pisces and the negative part of Neptune. So, and again, when people are subconscious and they're not in their spiritual energy as much, people act weird because there's all this um, internal junk going on. So just be aware. People, you know, like your boss or your mom or something, you know, people you're interacting with who aren't as connected internally can seem sort of strange um, and act kind of jerky because they're not able to feel like they can get what they want and, and this sort of thing. And again, if you are someone who's compassionate, you might ask people what's going on and, and this sort of thing to be able to help them to see how they could attain their dreams or what they need to release in order to do that or what they need to improve upon, you know, um, and showing them they do have the stuff. You know, they got it. Sometimes when people are in so much fear, they overlook their strength. So that can be good. Um, these Mars phases can be a little tricky with, you know, romantic relationships and money stuff because that's where the vulnerabilities really come up with Mars and Pisces. So watching out for if you're over-imagining things. You don't want to blurt stuff out because, again, we're going to deal with the Mercury going retrograde. It's like maybe, you know, what you're thinking isn't really what's happening. Uh, you're misreading some signals, you know. Um, you're not going to go broke or you're not going to get dumped or whatever. So um, trying not to jump to conclusions that are based in fear or, you know, because um, it seems like it's really real, you know, when you're feeling it. So just be aware of that. And let me talk about the Mercury retrograde now. What's kind of interesting about this Mercury retrograde, let's say, here, is that, the, and I'll just tell you the dates of the retrograde, because you all want to know that, right? Everybody wants to know. So Mercury's going retrograde in Aquarius. It retrogrades on the 20th of January, and it will be retrograde until February 9th. Um, now, it, when it goes forward on February 9th, it's at one degree of Aquarius. So we say, okay, when is Mercury at one degree of Aquarius before it goes retrograde? Well, that is basically the 5th and 6th of January. So, okay, so we can kind of say we go into that period, um, you know, at that time. So, you know, you can start doing that inner work. You can start doing those meditations that, you know, Mercury retrograde can pull you into that. But it also can be some of those fears start arising because that Neptune's getting ready to go into Pisces and all this stuff. And so just observing yourself. And then with the good thing about Mercury retrograde in Aquarius, because Aquarius is so um, reasonable and not hyper emotional like Pisces is, it's like, hmm, I'm observing myself and my fear. That's interesting. You know, maybe just writing down your fears and observing them and maybe talking about them with somebody who is, who knows you really well and who has a, is not a fear type person and can say, you know, huh, that's not really accurate or hmm, that's a thing, but you can overcome that or, um, you know, get your fears right sized or your confusion or something like that. So that's a good thing about Aquarius is it doesn't get swept up so much with stuff. The one thing with Aquarius though, is it can be overthinking. Um, so watching out for, um, too much thought on stuff that's just going to work itself out. So again, you might want to write down things you're sort of obsessing about because Aquarius can be obsessive more than fearful. So, um, but an interesting piece too about this retrograde is we're going to have a new moon on the 20th of January at zero degrees of Aquarius. So it's kind of interesting to see astrologically if there's an event going on like the Mercury turning direct at zero one degree of Aquarius oh there's a new moon there so it's kind of like a little tie-in so when we look at that period of time between January 5th and February 9 when we've got Mercury being at that spot in two two places um, two uh, time periods and then the new moon being there too especially about what do you want to you know the new moon about new things you want to manifest and you know Aquarius can be about 
these higher visions for yourself. You know, Aquarius is anything's possible. And Pisces can be that way too. Pisces and Aquarius kind of share that visionary quality. And we've got that Mars and Pisces with the Neptune. So this whole period of time, you know, instead of like, I wish I were like that. It's like, how do I, I want to be like that. And how am I going to get there? Through your meditation, through examining your fears and releasing them, um, you know, removing blocks even can just make something happen. These imaginary um, blocks you've made up for yourself that are really nothing. So that can be a great thing when Mercury is retrograde in Aquarius. Um, another thing that can come up, because Aquarius is, you know, it's a sign of humanity, but it can be socially awkward. Um, I think I say in my Aquarius video on my website, you know, that um, I had a friend in high school who had a sweatshirt had Linus on the front and on the back it said I love humanity too it's people I hate and I used to stand behind her when we were playing softball or something I was like in the outfield to the infield and I was just like I'm an Aquarius and I was just like oh that's me I've got to really work on that you know that Aquarius can be like people but don't want to interact sometimes so um when Mercury's retrograde in Aquarius it's like yeah what is it about um personal human interaction like the theory Aquarius is good with theories, but sometimes not as good at the real application and the heart feeling of it. So a lot of the journey, spiritually of Aquarius, is connecting the mind into the heart, you know. And so Mercury retrograde can be like that. Where do I need to maybe really say how I feel to somebody? Well, they just know because I'm married to them, or they're my parent, or they're this, you know, or... Um, I don't know, say you do charity work, like instead of just doing work, maybe hugging one of the people or, you know, in the nursing home or something like this, like a humanistic touch instead of just the theory of humanism. So those are some kind of things to think about with Aquarius and also even to yourself, you know, giving yourself a break. You're on the spiritual path. You're doing so much. How are you being kind to yourself? You know, because Aquarius can be sort of robotic and just um, not taking the time to really praise yourself. So that can be another kind of um, meditation you work on during this Mercury retrograde. So I think that might be all I want to tell you. Um, let me just look quickly here. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for now, I think. Yeah, okay. Oh, there was one last thing, sorry. That the other thing that happens about this um, point where the Mercury goes retrograde is when Mercury it's actually going to happen in Capricorn right before Mer Mercury goes into Aquarius, but Mercury and Venus are going to conjunct there. And so again, it's putting some energy about the Venus and the relationships and opening your heart and connecting the head and the heart. And how can I put more um, of my heart into my concepts? And then the other side of that is how do I get more thinking into my fears? Just because think you know fears aren't rational. It's like let's see what's really clear here. So that marriage of the mind and heart is shown also by that Mercury and Venus being close together right before that um, that edge of Aquarius there, um, where we have the retrograde happening and the new moon. So all right, um, if you would like to get a session from me, you know it's alunamichaels.com. It's my website. I have my little ebook there too, which you can also get on. Um, Amazon Kindle. It's called The Spiritual Gifts, The 12 Astrological Signs. If you also want to see your own horoscope personally for your own sign, you can also go on olunamichaels.com and I have a written horoscope there for the month. And what's always great is look at your sun sign and then look at your rising sign, if you know it, which is based on your time of birth. Um, because we kind of work those generalized horoscopes in that way. So if you know your sun and your rising, you can read them both and get more kind of energy for yourself. So I guess that's all I'll say to you now. Have a happy month of growing spiritually, and I'll see you soon.